Hello, student. Welcome to today's experiment. Today, we are going to talk about experiment A2. And uh, this is nothing but determination of acceleration due to gravity, or in other words, the simple pendulum. So basically, if you look at uh, this experiment, the simple pendulum, we find that it has numerous applications in uh, various fields. Like in the field of education, we see that the simple pendulum experiment is commonly used in physics education to illustrate concepts re related to oscillatory motion, such as period, frequency, amplitude, and the relationship between these variables. So by this concept, it will help the students to understand the principles of simple harmonic motion and also to provide a uh, hands-on experience to reinforce the theoretical knowledge. We also have other applications such as timekeeping devices, the principles uh, derived from the principle from the simple uh, pendulum experiment have the crucial development of uh, these devices. So we're going to look at how we can set up these apparatus and uh, help us to get data to be able to analyze it and get the value of G. Then we'll compare this value of G with the theoretical value of G and come up with a conclusion. So let's go straight away to the ways of doing this experiment. So as, as we've discussed, the introduction part of this is that the simple pendulum is just a mechanical device that executes simple harmonic motion, motion under certain conditions. So on applying mathematical treatment, a simple formula is for its period T is derived and it can be used to determine the value of acceleration due to gravity G. Uh, our objective is that uh, we are supposed to determine the acceleration due to gravity using a pendulum. So some of the patterns that we we'll require for this experiment are as follows. We'll need a pendulum bob. We'll need a string, a clamp mounted on a stand. We also need a stopwatch. Of course, stopwatch will be for recording the number of oscillation mates. Meter rule, we'll use meter rule to take or to measure the lengths at which our string should be stretched to. We also need a protractor to get in the angle of inclination. And uh, we also have a steel ball here. So basically, those are the products that uh, we'll, be, we'll use to achieve this result. Maybe I can try to show some of them here. Yeah, so as you can see here, we have the stand. We have a steel ball here. And of course, this is the string. We have a clamp here. So those are the uh, material that is needed for this experiment. So the theory of this experiment is as follows. We find that uh, an ideal model of simple pendulum consists of a small mass bob attached to the thread, as we've seen, of length L, and allowed to oscillate freely in a vertical plane under the action of gravity. So the mass of bob and the string is assumed to be negligible. Then the motion of simple pendulum can be analyzed using Newton's second law, that is F is equal to MA, or in other words, Yeah, we will compare the, con the concept of Newton's second law of motion. The, the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force applied in it and takes place in the same direction. So when you when the string is displaced from the equilibrium position, the restoring force is F and is given by mass times the gravity times the sign of the angle in between. And the period T is the time taken to complete the oscillation. 
then the period of the motion is now given by t is equal to 2 pi divided by the root l, uh, 2 pi multiplied by root l over g. Thus, the equation can be used to determine the acceleration due to gravity g from the measurement of the period t and length l, where if we make g from this, the subject of the formula, we find that g will be 4 pi squared times slope, times the slope that we'll get. Of course, the slope will we'll get, we'll plot a graph of l versus t squared. Yes, yeah, so we can look at the procedures of setting up the apparatus. So at first, we'll start by taking, uh, starting with the length of 50 centimeter, then we'll proceed to the length of 100 centimeter. Then we'll also displace the bob through a small angle, say angle less than 10, and let it swing with a small oscillation. Then we'll record the time of 50 oscillations. Uh, then uh, we also do the same for a length of 60 centimeter, for 100 centimeter. So let us look. Uh, now, suppose our length is 50 centimeter and uh, we've displaced the bob through a small angle, say less than 10. We are going to see how it swings and we'll record the time of 50 oscillations. So we can check how it works with this program. So as I was saying, when uh, we put a length of each centimeter and displace the bulb at, uh, say, angle less than 10, then we'll see it swinging this way, and we'll be able to record the number of oscillation made. So it's also the same when the length is 56 centimeter. We also displace the bulb allow it swing and record the time as indicated above here. Then the same step is followed. We'll adjust the length to 70 centimeter, display the bob and swing it again. Then we make a record of the time as it will be displayed here. Then we'll do the same with the length of 80 centimeter displace the bob, allow it to swing, and also record the time taken for the 50 oscillation made as it will be displayed here. So basically that is how this experiment is achieved. It's just a matter of ensuring that your angle of displacement is accurate and you record the time for oscillations keenly so that is how uh, you will be required to take the readings. Then now,
Then after that, you will be required to tabulate your results in the table below. Like for instance, when the length is 50 centimeter or 0 0.5 meters, you report the number of oscillations indicated. Then you will get the period T in seconds. And of course the period T is, we take the time taken for one oscillation, then multiply by the, the, the number of, you take one over 50, that is will give you 0 0.02, multiply the time for 50 oscillations and get the periodic time here. Then T squared will square the, the, the periodic time here. So the same to the length of six centimeter, 70 centimeter, 80 centimeter, 90 centimeter, and 100 centimeter here. You make sure you tabulate your result here. Then uh, a student is required to analyze the data. And of course, when you are recording your data, make sure you, 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 you indicate the reading error, that is the error in length and the error in time. Then on the part of analysis, you are supposed to draw a suitable graph of length versus T squared using a Python from which you can deduce the value of acceleration due to gravity G. And you'll be able to compare this the value of gravity G with the standard value of gravity and make a conclusion or implications why your value of gravity is maybe exact or above or below the standard one. Then a student is also required to provide a short answer to the questions like what's the purpose of timing fifty oscillations instead of only one to determine the periodic time. Why must the size of amplitude be small? Then a comparison of the blue, of the value of G obtained with the standard value of G must be made and a comment of these two values to be given. Then maybe after getting that graph, you will see if it passed through the origin or it doesn't. You also give the implications for that. And of course, when you're giving conclusion, you need, you need to also give the assumption applied implied by the ideal model of simple pendulum. So simple pendulum is a, a good experiment to help us determine the value of gravity of any place that we are in.